Well, good to see everybody. I'm glad that you're here. Um, this is being recorded, FYI. So, you know, if you don't want your face to be on it, I would turn off your video. Um, if you say anything, it's going to be recorded. Um, it'll be on YouTube later. So I'm just going to give kind of a, a quick update on our DNS integration. Um, and then uh, there's some things we want to get feedback about um, and have a discussion about. So first, like what, you know, for, for those who don't know real quick, what do we mean by DNS integration? So a lot of people think when they think of ENS, they think of the .eth top level domain, um, which is the uh, native top level domain of ENS. But a lot of people uh, miss the fact that uh, it's actually been the explicit plan since 2017 publicly to integrate the DNS namespace into ENS. So really ENS is like naming infrastructure that can support any names. And we just happen to have .eth as like the native top level domain, uh, but there can be other top level domains and the whole tree. Um, so uh, we're expanding the namespace by integrating the existing DNS namespace with the same names and owners. Uh, and that's not claiming like a person's corresponding .eth names. This is a common misconception. So like if I have brantley.xyz and I, on DNS, and when I claim that on ENS, I'm not getting Brantley.eth. I'm getting Brantley.xyz on ENS. Brantley.eth is another name that also exists on ENS. Just like you have .com, .org, .io, separate namespaces on the same system. Um, and this is also critical to our whole strategy for ENS, uh, which is that one, uh, we're against name collisions. So. I won't get into too much the theory here, but um, I think uh, internet naming tends towards a single root on the internet due to the fact that uh, if people type in a name one place, they want that to uh, go to the same place that it goes to if they type that name in anywhere. Um, and uh, name collisions are bad for users because it can lead to phishing, it can lead to lost funds, it can lead to fraud and things like this. Um, I also think creating name collisions is bad for the adoption of the tech for that reason, because then we're fighting against uh, the um, the existing uh, um, network effects around the existing namespace. Um, so a lot of people ask, why don't we create more top level domains? And basically the answer is, well, we're integrating the DNS namespace, but we're not going to create new top level domains because we don't want to create name collisions with DNS in the future, because we think that'd be bad for the project. So what is the current state? Uh, currently, uh, we have .xyz set up so that if you have a second level domain on .xyz, you can claim that on ENS. That works right now. I've done that with Brantley.xyz. Um, I think a couple thousand of those have been claimed. Argent Wallet has Argent.xyz, and they give user subdomains of that. That's Those are ENS names. Um, we also uh have a couple other top level domains on ENS in which the the owners of the top level domain itself has claimed it so not second level domains those are .cred.art.lux.club.ceo and they're doing uh different things with it i won't go into the details there uh, a major thing we have coming up you might have seen our blog post is the company UNR is auctioning off 23 DNS top level domains uh, at the end of this month. And they contacted us and they said, hey, um, they'd like, you know, they, they wanted to claim those same top level domains on ENS. And so that whoever wins a top level domain in their auction gets both the DNS and ENS version of that top level domain delivered to them at once. We actually created um, NFTs that represent the top level domains. Uh, you'll be hearing, I think, more about this here soon, but we have a blog post announcing that they're doing this. This is really cool because it starts to solidify in people's minds that if you own a top level domain, you know, or really any name on DNS, you should implicitly also own that same on ENS, right, on the Ethereum blockchain. So it starts to solidify ENS in people's minds. Uh, the next big step in this process is full DNS second level domain namespace integration. Um, 
this is this was a we got a grant from ETC Labs for this. Uh, you may have seen a couple months ago. This is now on testnet on the Robson testnet. So what this means is that for any second level domain on DNS in which it has the proper DNS sec, which is a certain cryptographic protocol available to it, which is most of them, if, if it has that, you can claim that same second level domain on ENS. This is on Robston right now. It's basically just taking the, the method of integration that we have for .xyz and putting out to all of DNS. So if you have like a .com or a .tech or a .app or anything, you can go, you can go onto the Robson testnet and you can claim that right now. In fact, I encourage you to do that because if you find a bug, uh, please let us know. We'd like to find that bug before we launch it. Um, uh, we're very close to launching that on mainnet. Uh, just two things kind of slowed us up here at the slowed us up here at the very end. Uh, one, the gas fees for claiming those names are very, very high. And the reason for that is that there's this cryptographic proof that has to be verified. And to verify that on chain right now costs a lot. Um, so uh, we'd like to be able to put the verification of those proofs on a layer two. In fact, we were thinking of doing that on Optimism. And we actually reached out to the Optimism team and said, hey, do you think you could help us do this here soon? And the answer was, uh, they don't think they can do it soon. Um, so we'd still like to put the verification eventually on a layer two, maybe optimism later this year. Uh, but because it's uncertain, the timeline there, our, our plan is we're just going to put this on mainnet. Yes, it'll cost a lot first, but uh, you know, over time we can improve the gas fee situation. Uh, the other kind of slight delay was that we want to set it so that when you claim a second level domain, it automatically sets the public resolver and the Ethereum address. And um, we just recently realized that there's some wrinkles in how that works that's different than .eth names that we didn't realize. Um, and so we figured that out, but we just want some additional code review. And hopefully within about two weeks or so, we'll be satisfied with that. And uh, we'll be, put, be putting this on mainnet. Um, as I mentioned earlier, top-level domain owners can claim their top-level domains on ENS. Um, I had a blog post recently explaining that if you are a top-level domain owner on DNS, what you can do with ENS. And uh, you can go read that post. Uh, but the basic options are, one, make sure that DNS stack is working on your top-level domain. And then you can just like do nothing else if you want. And your second-level domain owners will be able to claim their second-level domains um, on ENS. The next option is, you can claim your top level domain on ENS, uh, but then just don't do anything. And again, the default will apply where second level domain owners can claim their second level domains on ENS. And in that case, it's just sort of per performative. If you just want to own it on ENS, just because you know, it's cool or because you might use it in the future. The next option is that you claim it and then you maybe do some sort of special integration with a registrar or something like this to make it easier for users to claim their second level domains maybe so that they don't have to do the verification process that costs a lot. And then the last option is that you claim it on ENS and then you make that top of the domain ENS first or e even ENS native. Um, the basic idea here is that you, you, you own it on DNS and you, you basically can like make sure there aren't conflicts there, by, by, um, but you can start issuing names on ENS uh, maybe first or even only. Um, willing to talk to anybody about that if they're interested. All right, lastly, I'll just list off, um, even with this upcoming you know, full DNS, second level domain namespace integration coming up, this, this feature is not done, it's not complete. Um, this will just be kind of the first step in this process of integrating it. I'll just mention a couple outstanding problems or issues that we will need to work through. Uh, so one, um, as I already mentioned, we need to scale the claiming process. It's super expensive, but we already sort of have, have a plan in place for that. I'm going to put the verifications on the layer two. Um, next, this process only works for second level domains. The problem with that is that there are some second level domains in DNS that function as top level domains. An example of this would be if you've ever seen like co.uk. So like if you go to google.co.uk, 
.co.uk kind of functions as a suffix, even though technically co.uk is a second level domain, not a top level domain, right? .uk is a top level domain, .co is a second level domain, but all the users are on third level domains or subdomains of that, right? Google.co.uk. This, uh, this, this upcoming rollout will not support users who own third level domains that are kind of like second level domains. They won't be able to claim their names. Um, we have a plan in place to eventually make that possible, but that's just gonna be a future feature. And another thing is that, uh, and Nick, please correct me if I'm wrong here, we will not support all, all types of DNSSEC, uh, but only certain types, which should uh, work for most names, but there's some names that, depending on the type of DNSSEC they have available, it won't work. Yeah, the, um, with the introduction of P256 support via uh, user code, uh, we support greater than 99% of, of all DNSSEC deployments, uh, but there are a number of DNSSEC ciphers that are uh, little used, if at all. Um, and we, like iGamal, which we uh, probably won't be putting the effort into supporting, given that they're, they're rarely, if ever, deployed. Right, thank you. Last thing is, uh, you know, could we maybe put like entire top level domains or something on layer twos? I mean, top level domain owners could do that. Maybe we could have recommendations for that as the top top as the layer two systems mature. Uh, that's another thing that could limit gas costs. Okay, so that is an overview. Um, so for I have some kind of questions that I could 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 ask to get discussion going. But first, I've just kind of laid out a lot of information there. Does anybody have a question or a comment based on that overview that is important to them. And just feel free to. All right, Tom Barrett, go ahead. Thanks. Thanks, Bradley. So, two quick questions. One is what is the preferred uh, DNSSEC uh, cipher that you would like us to use? And two, uh, three questions. What are the expensive gas fees you refer to for second level names? And third, how would we add a, a TLD to the second layer? What does that mean? Great, Nick, you wanna take the first one? Uh, yeah, so um, I, I can take the first two really by answering them together. Um, the gas fees are on the order of about 100,000 gas per uh, RSA key verified and stored. Um, and that is the most efficient algorithm we have available because RSA has a precompile. Can you tell, um, tell them what 100,000 gas in US dollars means right now? Uh, it depends what the gas price is as of this moment. Hang on. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, so at the moment, ether is 2100 and gas is 210 guay. Um, so that is... Must have that wrong. Yes, I do. Uh, currently, that's about 44 bucks, which is not great. Uh, and the worst news is that a uh, verifying a P256 key, because we have to do that entirely in user code, uh, is 10 times that. So uh, the gas prices are pretty steep at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, you asked me this at a moment when gas is like twice as expensive as usual, but even so, it's very expensive. It's out of control. Yeah. 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 And uh, a couple notes about that, though, is that it's a one-time fee for the user. Now, it's still super high. We don't like it. We're going to try to greatly reduce it, but there is no ongoing fee. So if I, I have Brentley.xyz on DNS, I have an ongoing fee I have to pay every year to the .xyz people. I claim it on ENS. As long as I claim own it, still own it on DNS, I have it on ENS, and there's the one-time just um, verification gas fee, but there actually is no fee that goes to ENS for that. Uh, and there is no ongoing gas fee or ENS fee. Um, that actually uh, makes me think of something uh, since I'm, I'm looking at Ulrich here. I know you asked this question a year ago. What if you lose the name on DNS, like it, you don't have it anymore, but you still own it on ENS, what happens? Um, I know Nick, you did a lot of work on that with NSEC proofs. Um, could you maybe, uh, just explain that real quick, kind of what you came up with. 
Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, before I start, uh, Tom also asked what it meant to put an L2. Uh, oh, sorry, right. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, uh, two LD on L2. And uh, the straightforward answer is that what we could do is we could take all of the ver verification work, which is the bulk of the work, and do it on something like Optimism. And then when it's done, uh, the contract on Optimism would simply send a message to uh, Ethereum saying, I've done all the work, I've verified that this is correct, this is who should own this name. Um, and then the contract on L1 just receives that message and applies it, which would reduce the gas costs by a couple of orders of magnitude. We'd be talking in the region of about sixty to 80,000 gas uh, to verify, which is more in the range of five to 10 bucks, less than that even. Um, and so the, the second question, Brantley, I've briefly blanked. Yeah, Tom, what was your second question? Oh, the DNSX um, cipher. Yes, no, sorry, I, I mean the, I think I answered that one. Uh, I mean, the one you just asked me, Brantley. Oh, um, what, uh, how, you, you came up with the thing with NSEC proofs to make it yes, to re right. delete DNS names. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if your DNS name expires, there's two things that can happen. One is that the new owner of the name could simply post a new proof and verify that, uh, therefore, you know, changing ownership of the ENS name. Uh, the second thing is that anyone can submit an NSEC or an NSEC 3 proof to the contract that proves that the record you posted, uh, the text record, is no longer present. Uh, and by doing so, erase your ownership of the name on ENS. Yeah, so the key thing there is that if a DNS name dis you know, goes away on DNS, the ENS name doesn't automatically go away, but like we could decide we run a service where maybe we check this and we delete them or something like this. There is a way to delete it without there being a new owner of the DNS name. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, Nick, did you answer Tom's question about which ciphers are supported and which ones are not? Did I miss that? Yes, uh, RSA and uh, ECDSA P256. Um, and in terms of hash algorithms, we support SHA-1 and SHA-256. Okay, and Tom, you have your hand up. Was there a follow-up question or did we miss something? No, I'm sorry. I, I'll figure out how to low, lower it. But by the way, we don't use SHA-1 anymore. That's kind of out of favor. But yep. No, it's, okay. I, I've supported purely as a legacy uh, measure. Cool. Thanks. I'll put that in my hand. Great. All right, Ulrich. Okay, yeah, I hey, support thanks, the- Thanks for being here. Ah, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, so uh, I uh, I support the dropping of SHA-1, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we, we try to drop it in DNS too, so. Um, so for anybody not knowing me, I work for .se, the Swedish top-level domain registry. Um, so, uh, uh, and speaking of top-level domain registries, uh, you know, I've been a follower of this project here for a long time, and I really want to, you know, <laughs> hang on. Uh, and I've seen your post about the top-level domains. Um, what I have been struggling with is we have actually a, a very intricate process of how we handle the NS keys. So we have like double uh, double a hardware security modules, and we have a paper copy in a bank, you know, all that stuff. And I struggle to do to to design a similar process for e ENS. And I, so I think that is something that we might could uh, at some point have a, a chat about. <laughs> Because I think that is something that is important for top-level domains to have. And I mean, we have this, we have even an RFC about the document that we should write to present other people how we handle keys. So they, <laughs> this is very <laughs> elaborate. Yes, I, and it's uh, absolutely a good point. We don't want uh, the ENS enabling of names to result in a security vulnerability because they do it. Uh, you know, in a, in a slipshod or a, a, an ad hoc fashion. Um, and I think that's definitely worth going over. We've talked uh, recently about this enablement of, of 23 names and uh, offering logistical support to those organizations in setting up hardware wallets and, uh, you know, and so forth in order to ensure that they're uh, securing that token uh, accordingly. Um, mm -hmm. So it's definitely something on our radar and it would be good, yeah, to set up a call and, uh, you know, maybe even 
push it to, to YouTube and so on, where we can go over how the DNS world handles this and what the equivalents are in Ethereum and so forth. Yep. Great. Yes, but key, yeah, key management is a huge deal. Very yep. important. Um, okay, Floyd. How are you doing, Floyd? Yeah, thanks, Brentley. So I think we have been discussing on the similar topic on uh, Twitter before. So, you know, I always have uh, uh, my opinion that at the very beginning, the early phase or the early believer of the ENS project, lots of them just put an equivalent between ENS and .eth. And regarding the recent, you know, projects that we are doing right now, the integration with DNS or even put some of the, you know, the TLDs over to the NFT version, that equivalent, you know, might not, you know, uh, exist any further. So a lot, of, there are actually lots of the users, is, they applied for some of the .eth names, some of them even joined a three dot three to six, you know, short name bidding. Some of them paid, you know, expensive for the premium domain when they were released, the job catch. So I think maybe the project, you know, the official team maybe can do something such as, you know, to you know, set up some guide or something to the overall, to the majority of the users, to let them understand what is the future vision of the ENS, because they need to know ENS is no longer only .eth. ENS is something, you know, wider than that, because the majority is not like the audience under this, you know, meeting that they can totally understand all the differentiation of these, you know. Yeah, we have, I'm in China, we have some WeChat groups, we have lots of local users. They are very simple. They think that this is a, a name, .eth is .ens, they can do hash association. Okay, cool, let's go ahead and apply for it. But later, when they find out that something else, like .com, can also realize that, but some other way, like DNSSEC, or some other, like, uh, we are auctioning the domains that can put it as an NFT version. So there are lots of ways to doing that. So I think they need to understand what is .eth's advantage still when those happens, because these are seems to be you know a little bit complicated to these you know very junior users. So, and something we need to let them know before they figure out or before they think this is something you know negative to the project itself, because they might think at the beginning when they preparing to register or they register or they put all their monies on the .eth domains. They did not expect in the future something else can do the exact same thing, which you know can put their investment, those things in vain to some extent. So that's my suggestion. Yeah, no, it's a great point. Uh, and with this new um, kind of ex expansion of the DNS second level domain namespace integration, uh, we'll try to put out more information explaining exactly what the benefits, the pros and cons of the different types of names are. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the basic thing is that .eth names are ENS native, which means that ownership uh, is entirely based on Ethereum, which allows for full self-custody, uh, the trading of, trading of names, um, ownership by contracts and, and DAOs and things like this. Um, whereas the DNS stuff, at least the default will be that ownership always follows the DNS side, which means that you can still use it for crypto payments and, and possibly even uh, content like websites, maybe depending on the browser, but um, you won't have the self custody uh, advantages and it won't be able to be owned and traded around in the same way as a result. Now, to make this even more complicated, that could change if a DNS top level domain owner decided to make their top level domain ENS first or ENS only. So, um, yeah, and a lot of this, I mean, I'll, I'll say this, and, you know, and we need to improve on this, and I'll even say I need to improve on this. Something I've learned from working at ENS now for a couple of years is that internet naming is one of those things that very few people understand because it's like, it's like a protocol that's lower in the tech stack that just kind of works, and, and many tech people don't really know how it works. They haven't thought about it. It's just kind of something in the background. And as a result... I've learned a huge amount about internet naming from working on ENS. And it, you know, it's more complicated than people think in some ways. And then secondly, trying to explain ENS to other people, I'm dealing with the fact that like, they don't understand internet naming at all. So some of these intricacies get complicated to explain or it takes background to explain. Now, we need to do better at doing it anyway. I mean, that's just like, that's our job to do. So 
So I'm not saying like it's not possible, um, but um, something we constantly run into. But you're right. We, I, we need to do a better job of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because from my perspective, I can still 100% understand the advantage of .eth comparing to all the rest of the NFTs that you create for those you know, TLDs. I understand, but all those users who already registered their own domains also need to register and need to understand because they might already have .com, .org, .net, but they eventually they still register .eth because they think this is something valuable, because they think this is something cool. But one day when they find, as long as they already have the .com, they can do the exact 100% same thing of .eth. They might be have a bad you know experience or they, they might have a bad feeling of why I still need to do it this way. So I think uh, by introducing from your team to the big audience, to the whole users regarding what is .eth's true value after all these uh, DNS you know, integration happening is kind of one, uh, you know, uh, is a one direction. Maybe, maybe we can take a look afterwards. Right, and it's not 100% the same capability, but you're right, we need to do a better job of this. Um, yeah. Correct. All right, does anybody else have a comment or question they wanted to discuss? Hey, Brantley, this is Andrew. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Andrew, how are you? I'm great, thank you. I'm actually on my way to get a second COVID shot, so this is a lucky morning. Congratulations. Um, thank you. So, Ulrich, I actually have a .se name. My last name is Rose, so I have Andrew Rowe.se, and I use andrewrose.net personally. The reason I'm here is I'm an artist, and I work with other artists helping them build their brand and presenting their imagery on the web and I've spoken with Brantley recently about how this affects NFT use and uh, non-fungible token uh, trading on the blockchain in conjunction with a traditional DNS website and so what um, I'm hearing everybody talking about now uh, leads to a question of how are we going to be able to integrate these top-level domains um, and our secondary domains on, say, a .se or a .xyz as a platform for presenting content and then trading content in such a way that if you have a .com or, a, or just a, a traditional DNS name, how are you going to be able to use the ENS um, co-location or, or, you know, claiming your DNS sec information so that you can actually integrate cryptograph, uh, cryptocurrency payments on your traditional domain names and how you can mirror them. So I think one of the things I heard about, um, you know, if you lose your registration, if you're helping an artist build a site and they forget to renew it, is there sort of a domain lock, like on a traditional domain, on the ENS? How can we prevent the loss of that branding while we're trying to create payment gateways or portfolio presentations? Or as Brantley and I were talking about, just dot .eth sites where an, an actual living artwork exists, and then it might disappear or no longer be coordinated with a, uh, a .com that people are familiar with for the main the main users that are, you know, on, you know, on the net. Is, is there something there that, that is already being worked on in terms of these questions uh, when we're talking about actually placing moving imagery, digital art, um, and other content where there could be some kind of mirroring back on the ENS if something goes wrong or if something is uh, needs to be simultaneous how, how's that going okay so Andrew if I'm understanding you correctly um, the default for DNS names on ENS will be that they can't be traded on ENS and the reason for that is that Whoever owns the DNS side can always claim the ENS side. And so we're actually, um, our plan is to make it 
um, with the, with our wrapper thing, Nick, is what I'm thinking of. So you can't trade it um, on the ENS side. However, if a DNS TLD, and there's so many like acronyms here, it's it's, it's a lot. But if you have a DN, if, if a DNS TLD decided to make themselves ENS first or even like ENS only, then that DNS second level domain could potentially be traded around just like a .dot e thing. So what I would say is if you'd like to have the ability to um, have the ENS name be traded around or something like this, like as an NFT, you got to have a .dot e thing. If a DNS TLD wanted to also have that functionality, they could, although it'd be a fairly radical thing to do and it won't be the default. I guess, yeah, I guess there's, there's that aspect certainly of you know retaining your branding and making sure that it stays um, connected. Uh, I'm I'm also maybe asking a question that's a couple steps ahead. That, that's the second part of the question of just where some of that content is is being hosted, housed, legitimized, blockchain, etc. That maybe I'm just not smart enough or, or knowledgeable enough to know about. But those are some of the questions that, that I'm concerned about where it's not just what we're discussing of the, you know, actual technical coding of all of it, but then the implementation of that for for the content going forward. So hopefully that's helpful. I, I feel like it's a little bit maybe past what we're talking about. Yeah, so the, the content uh, depends on the system. Um, I, I would say I'd be happy to discuss that more in depth with you um, after this or you know, outside of this meeting. But that, that's a good question. But you're right. I, I think it's a little off, to off this topic. OK, thanks. OK, I have a question for our DNS world participants. Um, I see Ulrich and I see Tom. If, if there's another person here from the DNS world, feel free to pipe in. But a question I have is, um, do you think it's like pot, like a uh, reasonable or possible that a DNS TLD might decide to become ENS first or ENS um, only? And if so, um, how do you see certain like I can UDRP things applying or, and also lastly, how would we help facilitate that with somebody? Do you understand oh. the question? <laughs> okay. Like, I, okay. Uh, how should I put this? Uh, if you go to the ITF, what is the shortest joke you could make? You go to the you go to the mic and you say blockchain. Oh right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Ulrich, so, you, you saw me at so for, for, thirty-two a year ago. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, I, you know, but from. <laughs> Be blockchain being a joke to looking at ENS as something legit to move, you know, to, to actually moving your TLD there? No. <laughs> so uh, I, I really don't see that happening soon. Uh, on the other hand, what I can see is that, you know, let's say, let's say, I, yeah. We have met a lot of times, so I think this is a cool project. And I, what I say to my CEO to convince him, you know, to to sponsor me and go to these meetings and whatever, is that I say what we want to do is we have people who have invested in .se names, and we want to extend this to other domains so that they have that they can't keep the value in this. So. Maybe ENS is the future, maybe not. But if it is the future, we're already there. So, uh, and I think that is something that is important for us right now. Um, what I can see is that, for example, next year I can, or in two years, maybe it's, you know, you never know with I can. They will open up a new round of TLDs, and there could obviously be somebody who says, "I'm going blockchain first. And uh, there is. <laughs> Uh, and that wouldn't be so strange. Then, of course, there is a lot of these rules about, you know, and I, I, I mean, the the worst of all is the the who is rule. I think goes a lot in the 
in ENS is about, you know, being, yeah, you basically buy a name anonymous. And a lot of the who is, is about not being anonymous, at least to, in some part of it. Uh, and I think there is a lot of clashes in that domain that would be need fleshing out. Yeah, and just to be clear, I would not expect like a major TLD to do something like go into ENS first yeah. or, or native. Yeah. Um, I would expect like a new top level domain. And by the way, there are new top level domains being added right now because some of the the um, the applications from the last TLD round are just now being resolved. There actually yeah. are some new top level domains that have zero registrations or very few that they would yeah. have an opportunity to experiment. Also, there's some GLT, GTLDs from the last round, which is frankly were kind of failures or they didn't market themselves well and they have a very small namespace. And this could be uh, maybe a differentiation or something. But you're right, I would not expect a large TLD to like bet themselves by going ENS first, or that'd be crazy. Um, but I think we could see some uh, maybe, exp and I will say there is dot cred, K-R-E-D, yeah. which actually is already experimenting with this with their own way of doing yeah. it. Um, and there's different permutations of how it could be done. They have their way, there's other ways. Um, Tom, did you, did you have something to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just to echo to what, what you said, there's absolutely a use case for an ICANN TLD to go ENS only. Uh, in that model, the ICANN route is simply a defensive registration Correct. that doesn't get used, it's idle. It, they avoid the potential of future collisions. Um, as you know, there's, there are other projects out there adding TLDs to the blockchain and their risk is collision. So you could well see some of those players applying for ICANN TLDs simply to bury them and, and keep them idle. In terms of uh, the rights protection mechanisms that apply to ICANN TLDs, they simply don't apply to the blockchain TLDs unless that smart contract decides to add them. So UDRP, who is um, some verification that's all at the discretion of the block, the blockchain TLD registry operator. Nothing says they can't have non-anonymous who is. It's totally up to them, I would think, based on how they run their particular space. So there's definitely some use cases here. Uh, as you point out, there are some dead ICANN TLDs or close to on life support that are looking for a new business model uh, and they might simply just shut down what they have and, and relaunch. So let me, and let me, you know, I, I had an assumption in there about uh, the ability for one of these TLDs to establish their own smart contract and say, look, we're not going to allow anonymous risk, for example, as a hypothetical. Is that something that these TLDs have the right to do or are they, fixed in terms of the rules for ENS? Good question. So uh, if you have a top level domain on ENS, you can s set the rules however you want. So you, you could like copy the rules of .eth if you wanted to, or you could create your own rules. But, um, but I, I, can, I can domains are actually have a requirement to that somewhere there has to be an owner registration. There Correct. needs to be a, a link back to right. an... In, in this model, Ulrich, there would not be any DNS delegations of second level names. It would just be a uh, dead namespace. Uh, it, it doesn't... Uh, a, a, a re registration in an ICANN TLD doesn't have to have a DNS uh, 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 delegation. True. It's, That's true. It's a registration. And then it's registered, you have to have a who is the, the, the actual who is protocol can, you know, in, to the public, it can be anonymous, but let's say, for example, law enforcement would have to be able to get out a real name behind it. I think what's being suggested is that a TLD owner could simply decline to do any registrations on their TLD and run it entirely as an ENS only service, in which case there would be no yeah. registrations. Yeah, but then that would conflict with their contract to ICANN. Would it? If they're not, yes. I mean, they're not registering any DNS names, would be the point. They are effectively just registering they, they, names. Yeah, they're registering domains. I mean, if they, 
I think that would be a your, your, your registration like doesn't have to be in DNS. It's just no, a registration. It, it has to be a DNS name registration, right? Not in what? DNS, but a, a, a registration of a DNS name. Like the, the ICANN the contract. Well, the ICANN contract doesn't uh, regulate how I nickname my children or uh, you know what, what I name my pets and any more than it, it's able to regulate uh, what happens with a, a particular string uh, in, in anywhere else. Well, and, and also <laughs> registration is a word that has different meanings, especially in the ENS context, because you're, you're not like taking registrations on your own system. You just basically create a smart contract that under certain conditions automatically can give out second level domains and maybe sends a fee to you. But technically you could say like, well, it's not on my system. I'm just like, getting the money from this i mean this gets kind of hazy in terms of I think, from these concepts, so, right? I, I i understand the technical difference and i know what you're getting at that you you would have a dns registry and you would have an ens registry and there's nothing in the dns registry uh, but that's a very technical <laughs> definition of the whole thing and i uh, you know lawyers can have very different ideas <laughs> okay so, so I'll say, <laughs> No, no, that's just my point is that lawyers, you know, I have no idea what the law really says. I'm not a lawyer, so, but that can be really. A, a... So a question for, for Brantley with dot cred, which you said was ENS first or ENS only. It's are ENS they, first. is there a mirror DNS zone file? The way yeah. I. It's they would have to tell you the exact details of their implementation. But my understanding is that they've set up a system so that if you own the, the version of the name on ENS, you can then control it on DNS. And the way they do that is for their registrar, it's a closed TLD. You log in with your Ethereum account so they can see if you own it and then they let you control it. Um, now they've set it up actually such that they can completely control the namespaces on both sides. So if there is a problem, they can block, they can take it away from you on ENS and DNS. They've chosen to set it up that way, but you don't have to set it up that way. So, so my question is a little different, right? For every registration in ICANN, you pay ICANN a fee, 18 cents a name. So are they paying ICANN a fee every time they issue an ENS dot cred? My understanding is that they are because they're having it live on both sides. Okay. But you don't want to talk to them for the exact details. Um, I'll, I'll just say on the issue of like UDRP and legal and ICANN stuff like this, um, I've talked to a number, a wide range of people about this and I've gotten different answers. I mean, it would seem to me like it's not something people have really done. So it might be somewhere of a gray area in how this plays out. I will say ICANN always has the, I mean, could potentially say, well, we don't like what you're doing with it. So we're going to take away the DNS side from you. So you can no longer use it as a defense. Or we're going to give this to somebody else. Now you have, have name collisions. Um, but, um, I think it's interesting experiment. I think that's that if you did that, you would be like a trailblazer. I mean, you'd be kind of on the cutting edge. Um, I also want to say real quick, uh, Ulrich has been very support. I mean, Tom too has been extremely supportive. Ulrich has been very supportive a year ago. I, he made that he made this joke about blockchain as a joke in like the traditional internet communities. I gave a presentation in person at this, um, legacy internet organization you probably haven't heard of called dns oarc and it was like it was like being fed to the crocodiles a little bit um people you know laughed at it they didn't really understand blockchain but they just think it's stupid and so they just like we're gonna make fun of you although ulrich stood up and and was like supportive i mean he, he had some critical questions too but he was supportive and said publicly actually guys i think this is really interesting so i i appreciate that kind of support um Anyway, uh, we have just a few minutes left here. Uh, does anybody have a, another topic on this that they wanted to bring up? Um, I see a hand from from Floyd. Floyd, go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, thanks. So I just heard uh, heard the uh, the lawyer mentioned just now, but in the ENS world, actually, it's very interesting that the lawyer doesn't work here because it's an NFT version, and UDIP rule rule doesn't work here. And I understand that the team is going to make the DNS, you know, integration over to ENS, so that more 
user end user from DNS world can you know feel how ENS how hash association feel like so that maybe sooner or later they will realize the true value of the dot eth uh, which is the native you know association so my question is you know sooner or later will there be you know any other you know suffix such as recently we have the UNR Corp that is creating some other NF NFT uh, you know style of the domains will there be will uh, because my understanding is dot eth is the only you know native association and then is the only native ens as dot eth will there be other native other than you know dot eth in the future or there will be no just the dot eth yeah so uh just to be clear with the unr thing those tlds will not be ens native they'll just have control of it because they control the dns side uh, and mm -hmm. could there be other ENS native top level domains in the future? Yes. And that was kind of what we're talking about. I mean, potentially that was what we were talking about different ways that, that maybe could happen. Um, uh, like I said, at the beginning of this, a, a key principle that we are committed to that I would actually say differentiates us from, uh, just about almost any other blockchain naming project out there is we are committed to trying to avoid name collisions with DNS. Um, yes, that puts some like, I would say kind of like restrictions on what we can do somewhat, um, kind of in the short term, maybe restricts us a little bit, but we think that that is in the long term, the best thing, like I said, for users, for the adoption of the technology, for the success of the project. And so that's, that's why we're committed to that. That's why we're even talking about this. Tom, go ahead. Yeah, one more question. Um, I know, you know I appreciate UNR's marketing around the auction of their TLDs, uh, and they're adopting some sort of the latest NFT standard for their TLDs. But to your point earlier, since they're not pure ENS, these are not pure NFTs, right? No, they are, um, but. So an NFT depends on again, we get into definitions here, but I'll, I'll say these are NFTs that follow one of the main standards, which is called ERC 721. Um, and you don't necessarily have to have all of the functionality to have some of the functionality. Um, so. Okay. Thanks. Great. Uh, does anybody have a, a last comment or question on this topic before we take a break? Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm super excited about this. And uh, yeah, I think this DNS namespace integration thing is awesome.